Hello, good day and welcome back. So in this exercise um, section, I want I figure we should try and pull together some of the things we've learned already in this chapter and of course the previous chapter, all these things are gonna come together. But definitely what we learned so far about go routine. And so we've played with a number of things, we've looked at some patterns and so on, and now we have a I think a better feel what a go routine um, is and how go routines operate. So let's try and do a exercise. So the exercise I came up with is this word count exercise. Now, if you know about MapReduce or big data, then this is going to be a very familiar um, example to you. But if you don't, don't worry about it. You don't need to know anything about big data. You don't know anything, know, know anything about MapReduce. I'm not going to call anything about MapReduce, but I just wanted to mention it for those who might have some of that experience that yes, this is a the word count example that you might find um, for in big data. Now, um, so what are we going to do? So we're going to write a Go program which will print out the number of occurrences of each word. The program will use a slice of string to represent the text data. So we're not going to worry about reading from files because since I haven't taught you that, I do not want you to worry about reading from files. Of course, once you write this program reading from data from a slice of string, um, you can easily uh, make the program read from a text file and just feed in the data, as you will see. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We're not, of course, in this program, we're not going to do, do it, read from text file or any external thing. But once you have the foundation, you can see how easily you can expand it to read from a text file or from some other database or from you know a web server or something or stand up a web server and have somebody submit information via the web. All right, enough said. We're simply going to stick to reading from a slice of string. All right, um, a line of text. So what is a word for us? A line of text will be split slash broken into a word at a white space. Now, um, if you don't know what a white space is, um, it's simply um, the classification given to anything that you cannot see in terms of characters that you cannot see. So for example, a new uh, a space, regular space, if you press the space bar, that's a space, and a tab is also a space, right? It's just a special type of space in terms, a tab gives you several spaces, or could give you special spaces, depending on how you set up your, you know, your editor or whatever. So we're gonna call those two white space, okay? Now, how do we split on them? Um, we're gonna see. Now, there are two ways we can split. One of them just simply allows us to say split on this particular character and will allow us to say split on a tab or a space. But we want to be able to split on either a space or a tab, so we're going to use the regex package. Don't worry, it's not very hard to use and I'm going to show you that, okay? All right, so what does the program flow look like? So imagine we have some data and for us our data is going to be a slice of string, which we've covered slices already, so it's not a big deal. And we have this thing, let's say we're going to call a reader, right, a function. And we're going to read a slice of string and from this data source and put out a line. Okay, so we're going to read a entry from that slice and it's going to be a line of text. We pass it to a function that's our splitter, a line splitter. This function is responsible for taking a line and returning um, some words from it, right, for those that line. And then we have a word counter, which is going to take those words and say, well, okay, I see the word the one time or two time in this sentence. And of course, it have to do this for the entire data set. So of course, there's a loop here, right? So this would be the iterative approach where, you know, you're, you have a big loop around your program here, which read from the line reader, cause the line reader to get a line, pass it to the splitter, the split generate some words, we pass our word counter and we go back, read the lines, blah, 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 and we keep doing until we exhaust our entire data set. And then at that point, we can say we're finished and whatever the word counter come up with in terms of how many times they've seen each word, then it will just print it out on the output, all right? Of course, we're gonna do it that way. We're gonna start off that way. And you can see some of the limitations here. Um, for example, is there any dependency really between the line reader and the splitter, other than the fact that the line reader should just present to the line splitter some lines. So, but we don't have to wait. They don't have to wait on each other otherwise. Like if the line reader could come up with um, some way of getting some lines, let's say it's reading from a file, 
um, or even our data set, it can read those any line if it wanted to. It doesn't have to read the first line. It could read from the middle of the file, blah, blah, blah. And so like we said earlier, if you're reading from other data sources, maybe the, the lines are not gonna come in in some predefined order. And so since we just count in words, it really doesn't matter. So our line re or our reader could choose to read and present lines in a manner that suits that's best for it. And in that sense, it can just put these on, as we know, a channel. So our little blue pipes there are our channels. And our little readers routines now with the little circles in them, I put the circles to really say, so these guys are off running by themselves, you know, looping around, spinning by themselves. And so we took out the overall loop from the program. I just have these nice little routines that just reading data, pushing it on a channel. And then another guy who is responsible for splitting them is pulling it off of that channel and pushing it onto another channel, which, you know, are going to be the words. And which for us, words is just a hairy um, or slice of um, strings also. And then, you know, some other routine that's reading those slices of words, um, strings and uh, words and counting them up. And of course, when there are no more words to be read, it knows that it's finished and it outputs the thing, okay? And that information is gonna propagate because our reader, when it's finished, it's gonna close line channel and then the line splitter is gonna see that line channel is closed and go, oh, I know there's no more words because this channel is closed. And it's going to finish reading the lines and then close the word channel. And then once the word counter sees that the word channel is closed, it knows that oh, there's no there are no more words and it's also just returns and that's that. All right? So that's what we're going to implement. We're going to start with iterative approach and then we're going to come back and then turn that into a concurrent approach. Now your exercise, which I'd like you to do and try doing it because that solidifies what you've learned. And of course the solution is going to be provided also, but keep in mind what I've always said is that there's, there are more than one ways of doing anything in programming. When it comes to writing a program, programmatic solution to a problem, there are multiple ways. Ask five people to do it and you might very well end up with five different ways. And some of those individuals might even give you more than one way per individual. So uh, this is not the only way of solving this problem. And whatever you see as the solution for me is not the only solution. So definitely give it some thought and try it and possibly come up with your own way. Feel free to criticize or enhance. All right, um, for your exercise, is I'm going to write this and provide a solution to this, but I want you to take this solution, I'm looking here, and turn it into a solution of the same program, program, yeah, problem, where you have multiple lines um, splitter. So as you can see from what we have learned in terms of concurrency pattern, what we have is a fan out and then a fan in, right? So that would be exercise how to turn this program. Now you will run into some things, housekeeping that you'll need to take care of, of course, but I'm hoping that with all the stuff you've learned that you can do this by yourself. All right, and of course, definitely review some of the previous exercise um, videos if you have to. So let's get started. So this video is not 10 hours long. And so I'll save this. And um, for now, I'll just minimize it. And so where do I get some data? So there's this program. So you can see here, I already created a directory for our exercise. I went into the directory and I do go env and redirected that output to go underscore env that text. So let me just show you what go env prints out. When you do that, it prints out uh, this. Well, now that I'm looking at this, this is not very exciting text. So maybe uh, go doc and then let's go strings maybe. And so, here I have document some documentation on the string package. Uh, that doesn't look too exciting either. Let's do string text um, that uh, split. Uh, is there a split function? There better be a split function. There it is. S P L I T. All right. Let's see. Okay. Not have very much text. Um, so maybe um, this stuff is not giving me as much um, text as I want. So what I'll do is this. Um, I remove this. I'm going to go remove go env. And then what I'll do is go doc strings. And I'll re re 
direct that into data.txt and then I'll go go doc um, what's another package we've used FMT right and I'll add on to that data also and so now if we open up our editor here I'm just trying to generate some data that's all I'm trying to do um, so if we open up our editor here we can see um, some stuff as a matter of fact I, I like the data that we got from um, the FMT package um, but I'll leave it all in there right um, uh, what do you think uh, let's let's remove um, our data once more and just use the output from the FMT package um, that looks nice and very so let's do that all right so there we go so we have some data right and so what I want to do let's try and do this on the command line so we have an idea what the output should look like so cat data this pipes my data out to the screen so this you could think is sort of like my reader and um, my reader is going to do what sort of have to split each line into um, each line into words right so how do I do that well before I do this there's a program called TR okay and translate and what it does is it takes uh, you give it two strings and basically, whatever characters you want to replace, so let's say I have A, B, C here, and then X, Y, and Z, it basically means wherever you see A in the input, replace it with Z, and wherever you see B in the input, replace it with Y, wherever you see C, replace it with Z. Now, I can swap things around, and I can totally do something like this. I can say C, a, well, that's not probably exciting. Z, Y, X, right? And so now it says wherever you see A, swap it with Z. Wherever you see B, swap it with Y. Wherever you see C, swap it with X. And so in order to see that, let's just try it. So I'm going to say echo A, B, C, and I'll pipe it to TR that. And as you can see, I get back Z, X, Y. Makes sense, right? All right, let's see what else I can do. What if I did AA? Well, I should expect ZZ, YX, right? So it's everywhere in that straight input where I see those characters um, thing. What if I have something like E, F? Well, I don't have any translation defined for E and F, so they pass through on change. So we can use this now to generate some word because we said Everywhere, we're going to break this up into spaces. Now, just imagine that I had something like this. I had echo, hello, good people of earth, right? Like this. And I decide to put a new line. So that's one sentence. And I decide to put a new line everywhere there's a space. So now I'll have one word here, another word, another word. So I can take this, pipe it to TR, say everywhere there's a space, replace it with a new line. Okay. And so now I have this. Okay. Now I'm going to ignore for the moment that oh, this word, first word has a comma on it and so on. That I don't care. We don't care about, but symbols. So we're going to treat that as a word also. And so for this example, what I have is if I pipe this now, so you could see this is my reader part here. This is my line splitter and it's putting out words. And then I need something that's going to count words. So this part, I have to do it in two pieces here. So, and the reason to do it in two pieces, well, I'll, I'll show you in a minute, but let's just do this. There's a program called Unique. If you're using a Unix-like system, these things make sense. If you're on Windows, sorry, Windows does not have equivalent tool. Sorry that you're using Windows, but this unique, and I can say do a count. And so now unique is telling me um, that you know. Uh, let's open this up a little bit more. Unique is telling me that hello occurred once. Good da da da. It's each one of those words occur only once. And so what if I had a little bit of a longer sentence, um, and I said something like that. And so now. Earth appears two time, right? Okay, uh, maybe of an earth appeared two time, 
And so, hmm, look at that. Um, it showed me 111. And so it didn't really count up Earth because it counted Earth here. Um, well, that's fine and fine. There's only one or that. And then what would appear, there one there. But my of here and my of here, they're not next to each other. So unique could not count them. Okay. So what I really need, so if I do echo of backslash new line of, and I pipe this to unique minus C. Notice now unique could count them. So what I need is my words to be next to each other. And there's something that can do this for us. And that's something is called sort. And so if I do pipe this to sort, no, um, notice it's sort that, but uh, let's give this much longer example here. Pipe this to sort and no, you can see it's sorted. There's some space there, whatever, but it's I am earth and notice the earth and earth that comes next together. But look at this. My two ofs are right next to each other. So now if I pipe this to unique minus C, now I get the results I expect, which is two ofs, right? So this is the kind of output we expect. And we can kind of, um, kind of try it on the text we have. So you can say cat data, pipe it to TR, replace the spaces with a backslash new line, pipe it to sort, and then count it. Note that I have the words that are similar next to each other or the same next to each other. Um, do a unique count on that. And now we can see that I have 23 wills, 12 with all these other things, right? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, 125 still. 22 that and so on. So that's the kind of result I want to see. And of course, um, I mean, I can have this um, ordered if I wanted, you know, um, to pipe it to sort again and do minus R for, for ordering. And um, we could do reverse ordering and all this other stuff, right? So it doesn't really matter. That's not the important part, I lost order thing. The important part is getting this result like this. So again, this is sort of like my reader that's giving me my lines. This is my line splitter. And these two parts here are acting as my counter. And the reason why these two, I need these two to do my counting is because while you need to count the words, it needs some help to make sure that all the words are next to each other. So that's where we do it on the command line. So let's kind of do that here in text, um, in our thing. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. And I want to turn all this text because I don't want to read, I have to read from a file. So I want to turn this into a slice of, um, of strings, right? So how do I turn this into a slice of string? Well, um, I'm going to kind of cheat here and open up the data file. And ooh, that's a very bad background coloring and stuff, but sorry about that. And so what I'm going to do, I want everything to be a, a word. So there are also some, already some double quotes in here. Um, if you remember, there are a number of ways to do strings in Go. And so one of them is to do like a back tick. OK, so I don't have a back tick in this text. So I'm going to use that to enclose my my thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say on every line and you can't see that but basically, you don't have to do it because I'm going to generate this for you. But if you want to try it and you have Vim, um, I'm going to say on every line, which is colon, I put a colon to, to be able to type a command in Vim. And percent means every line. I want you to substitute the beginning of that line um, with a backtick. Okay. Well, actually, I'm going to do a tab and then a backtick and then forward slash and then no. So it substitute that. So just in case um, you want to see what I typed there just now, I typed this colon percent s forward slash. This means the beginning of the line. And I want to replace the beginning of the line, which doesn't really replace the beginning of the line. I'm going to plug my laptop in. And I said, put a tab and then a back tick. All right? So this represent the replacement string. This represents represent the search string. This means do a search and replace. Uh, substitution and this percent means on every line because if I took this out it means on the current line and I don't want that and in Vim you type a colon to be able to start typing commands all right so there we go so that's what I type to get this now what I want is 
at the end, so what I'm trying to create, if I have a string here, hello, I am from Earth. What I want to do is turn this into tab, backtick, this, backtick, comma. Why do I want to type it, turn it into that? Because I could go to the top of it and I could say var data is equals to a slice of string. And then I can do, you know, the whole disk bit. And then that's all. And that turns my all my data into a slice of thing. All I have to do is put at the end of it, this close in parentheses and in front of it, this bit. All right. So now, how do I get the last bit here? Same thing. I go colon percent s forward slash. And this means at the end of the file, I want you to find at the end of the file and substitute at the end, I want a backtick, a comma, and that's it. So let me go type that now. And so I'm going to type colon percent s forward slash dollar sign forward slash backtick comma forward slash and enter. And that gives me exactly what I want. And like I said just now, I'm going to go to the end of the file and I'm going to go to the end of the file and I'll put a close in parentheses. I'm going to go to the beginning of the file and I'll put a var data. And since we want to experience from this package, I'll put capital D. Data is equal to an array of string, a slice of strings array, and then that. All right. Now, I'm going to save it all. And you should, if I go back over here, it should be exactly like I said it would be. Okay. So there you go. All right. So let me close this guy because I don't want this anymore. Um, let's see. I'll leave it in the, the notes to as say that oh, this is this is the Vim command. Vim command. Uh -huh. All right. And so the objective is to be able to get this. So I'll kind of anyway. I'll leave it. So if you watch the video, it makes sense. So all right. Um, so the Vim command is not this. So let me take this out from here. So just leave that as Vim command. Okay. All right. So this guy now is a go, um, is, is really data.go. And of course, I need to put it in a package. So I'm going to say package. And just for simplicity, I'm going to put it in package main for now. Okay. And um, let's reformat and make sure that everything is thing. All right. So it's called package main. So it's called expansion main that main, runtime main not defined. All right. That's fine. We don't have that just yet. All right, so we have main that go, and then package is main, and then font main, and then let's test that though what we have works. So print line, and then I'm gonna do um, length of data. Oh, it's already there, and that's gonna give me how many lines in my data. And so if I go here and I say go run main and then data compile the two together. I get 353 lines and I know that's correct because if I do something called word count, I do minus L for counting the number of lines. Well, actually, let me do this data. And it tells me I have 357 lines, not 53, and um, about this number of words. Now, the reason why word count is coming up with more lines is because word count is counting package blank line, you know, this line, and then my ending this line. Okay. That's why you got 357. As you could see here, it ends at 357. So word count is doing that. Whereas my, um, in go, I'm only counting the lines in the slice, which is less. Okay. All right. Good. Four lines less. All right. So look like if we're on track to start now. No. What did we say um, was the first thing we're going to do? We said that, okay, I should have actually kept that going. Kept my little um, thing in the back there. So for iterative to our solution here, we said we're going to have a reader, line splitter, and a word counter. So let's just do just that. So we write function reader, right? And reader takes what? It takes a slice of data. So data is D. It's a slice of string. And it returns what? Um, well, um, hmm, that's interesting. 
how do we want to do this iteratively? Well, um, maybe uh, it takes a slice of string and it doesn't return anything, right? Because uh, it reads the data and it, um, well, let's see. It's going to cause, hand it over to the function, which is our line splitter. Did we call it line splitter? Yes, line splitter. And line splitter takes a string or a line of that's a string, and it returns what? It returns um, a slice of string, which are the words, right? So line splitter returns words, which is a slice of string, right? And then finally, we had the guy who is the word counter function word counter who takes uh, words which you know is just a slice of strings also and it doesn't return anything because in this iterative solution as you run in it it can't produce any output until it completely finishes so it has to be writing its output somewhere and at the end of it we'll just check where it writes its output so We'll think about that for a second. Now, considering what we're trying to do here, it looks very suspicious. Like what we're trying to do is map and we have a, a relationship between integer and words. And so this brings to mind we could use a map. Now, we don't want to do int to string because if you put in the number two, you could see it or you're going to end up with different strings. So we really want to do it. The unique part here are the words or the string and then the value is the integer. So we seem, it seems like our result var result is really just a map of string to int all right makes sense and then here we could initialize that by saying result is equals to map make a map of string to int all right and the last thing we want to do is of course fmt that print line and we're going to do a simple printout um for now um which is just print result. Now, later on, we're gonna iterate over it so we can have something that looks like this. But for now, we'll just print out that. Um, maybe we should just fix it right now. So let's do for key comma value, if you remember how you iterate over a map, is range result. And so we can do that, that, that. And then now we can say our value, which is the number, and then we can do that to the key, right? So bam, 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 and then key, right? And that takes care of printing out our results for us. So that's looking good. Um, here we need this guy to return, when it takes a string, to return a set of, um, a set of words. So let's try and do something very simple. Let's just try and give this a simple run through by saying um, we have reader who we're going to pass the data. Okay. And then, of course, once uh, this return, we know to our results, everything is done. But what it's going to do is let's just call it this line and it's going to take one line from the data by doing this. Okay. And of course, it's going to pass that line to the line splitter function, right? And of course, the line splitter will return some words. Make sense? And what are we going to do with those words? Well, we're going to pass it to word counter. Right, we pass the word to the word counter. And of course, if read up takes a little one line, passes it to line splitter, gets the result, passes it to word counter, word counter does its magic, then at the end of that, when this function returns, we can print out. So we need the line splitter to split the words, and we need this guy to count the words. Well, in terms of counting the words, that seems pretty easy. So we just do four, and we just want the words itself. So we don't want the index for the word, uh, we just want the word. So we loop over that, um, if you remember, when we loop over, range over a array or slice, we get the index. But if we do the multi-value variable one, we get um, the index and the value. So I'm going to throw away the index, and I want the word itself. And I'm going to range over words, yeah, words. 
And then each time I find a word, what I really want to do is increment how often I've seen that word, right? So if you think about it, if I take my result map and I look up the word that I want, then I add one to it, which means, hey, whatever value, number, so how many times I've seen this word before, add one to it. Now, the good thing with a map in Go is that we know that if we try to look up something in a map and it's not there, it's going to give us the default value for an int. So the default value for an int is zero. So the first time I look up any word, let's say I'm looking up my name, Veril, when I put Veril here and I try to uh, retrieve it, it's not in there. I'm going to get zero. So zero plus one is one. So this does say that oh, this is the first time I see it. And so what we really want to do is simply say a result of w is equals to result of w plus one. So that's nicely encapsulate us keeping track of our words. The only thing we have to sort out now is how do we split words? So there are a number of ways we can split words. So um, let me try and go take a look, um, show you something here. And so let's go to Golang and then package packages, PKG, and then strings. Okay, so there's a string pack, strings package, and we messed with it earlier. And you can see we do split after, split after n, split n, but let's look at split. And so you can see it takes a string s, it takes a separator s. Oh, let me zoom in. Oh, I forgot to zoom in earlier today. Ah, that's too much. <laughs> uh, so maybe like that. All right. So let's go back. And so it splits, the so split splits S into all substrings separated by S and return a slice of the strings between those separators. If sep is empty, then split um, after each unit code 8 sequence is equivalent to split N with a count of negative 1. So if a separator is empty, so here's an example. So um, blah, blah, blah. Separator here is a comma. Separator here is A space. Um, here's an example where separator is empty string. So we should expect to get back an array of each um, letter, essentially. Essentially, it's going to split each letter. So if we run this, we're going to see. Again, we get back each letter. So there's a space there. There's A. So it we split by letter. We don't want to split by letter. Okay. Um, and so if we split by a space though, um, let's give an example here. So let's move this over and here is that. And then we're going to split by space. And so here I should expect three words, right? Um, two words, right? This, this, and this, um, let's do, I'll do this, right? So now we get three words back. So if I run this, now I get a slice of three words back, three strings, all right? So this is what we want to split by. But remember what I said, we want to do spaces and tabs because there might be tab in, tabs in our file. I don't even know, but let's just do spaces and tabs. Now, if you want, you can stick with just spaces alone, but this is a stretch thing. So let's go to regex package. And if we go to the regex package, you're going to see that oh, there's a also a split function here. Uh, there we go. And so now you can split by a regular expression. Um, and so the way you do it is you say regex package must compile and you give the regular expression. You know what? For the purposes of this thing, so I did it already with how I said. But since I haven't taught you regular expression and the mantra so far has always been don't um, do something that I haven't taught you. So let's go back and we're going to modify this to say we're going to split on space. Okay. All right. So we can just leave it as space. Um, so let's use string that split. Um, since I haven't taught you regular expression, I don't want you to be confused and get distracted with regular expressions. So let's use just split. So uh, here we go. We're going to simply return strings that split 
and we're going to split on this word, this line, and we're going to use space. Okay. <laughs> That's all it is that our line splitter is going to be doing. Okay. Oh, um, well, since I said it's returning, um, words, um, I could say words colon equals, and then, um, you know, return. It's fine. Okay, I don't even think I need the, uh, so uh, what's the problem? Oh, no new new variable. Ah, no new variable, right? Um, I don't even think I need this here. So anyway, it's implied, but um, yes, I think I do need the return statement, missing return statement. Silly go. Come on, return. Right, we are returning, so why need it? All right, so we're going to be returning um, the word. All right. Um, no, I don't. I think my thing didn't update. Actually, that's why you still see this red mark. So let's run this and see if this works. So let's go back up and do a run through this. And notice how for the first line I have package FMT um, line and all these other thing. Right. No. What about if I were to um, now introduce a loop here, right? If I introduce a loop, and once I this reader is called, I introduce, introduce a loop that just, instead of getting just the first line, it get all the lines. So now we're going to do four, line colon equals to range over D, right? And then, now I do this. And so now this should take care of reading each line from D. Ah, I don't want the ID, the index, so I'm do that, throw away that. And so now I get each line and I loop around, call that, and I'm good. Ah, okay, it's still in update. My code, my editor is really weird. I gotta fix that. So now, if I run this now like this, now we can see that I get 13.4, and so it looks like if it's working. I thought we had like 22 something when we did it before. And so um, if I do grep, I'll pipe my output here to grep, and I'm gonna look for 22. And so we have 22 that, okay? <laughs> and so, um, interesting. Oh, well, actually it was a different set of text that we use. Oh, so it doesn't count. All right, so, or was it? I can't remember. So I think, um, mm, um, okay. It doesn't have um, data anymore. Well, okay, it's not going to be the right, the same thing. We kept packages in be included, so uh, yeah. So the result is going to be a little bit different. Okay. Um, so okay, so width was twenty six. So let's see if our result give us twenty six width. Oh, and we don't have width with twenty six. So let's see what do we have for width um, twenty seven. Oh, okay. So maybe there's some other data that's included in um, our data set. Well, it's not the same data set, so, um, so it's slightly different. Let me see why, at least width should be 26. Why is it coming out as uh, 27 in our data set and 26 here? So uh, probably a little bug somewhere, but I'm not gonna waste time in trying to figure it out. Um, without was two, come out as two there. Um, let's see, with here, without was two. Oh, okay, so mm, I don't know, that's not what I wanted. I wanna do cat and then do grep and then with. And then I have, um, 26 here. Oh, that's why. Ah, oh, because uh, when we do the cat, it's seeing the back line, the back tick as part of the width as a character. Whereas once our Go program reads it, the back tick is not a character, which makes sense. So um, in Go, our pro Go program is more correct because this back tick really goes away. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, so everything is working fine. So as you can see, our code is working fine. Does that make sense? Why? When we catch it here and we pipe it, why we get a slightly different answer here in terms of 26 versus 
27 in our goal program. Um, these two are correct. All right, because of the back tick. Okie dokie. All right, so our program is look like it's working and that's the iterative approach. Okay, and that's working fine. So what would it take for us to change this into a concurrent approach? Okay, so the concurrent approach is you're going, we want to be able to launch our reader here and instead of it sitting around in a loop and read a line, send it to our line splitter, wait for the line splitter to finish it and then send it to word count, we want our reader to simply just read a line and stick them on a channel, right? That's what we really want. And we don't want it to think, to care too much about, um, you know, waiting on the line splitter. So that's it. And we don't really want the reader to take the responsibility of invoking these other thing either. We can do that in the main program if we like. So here we essentially want to just say, you know, uh, reader. So what is the channel that the reader is going to produce data on that line channel? So we want to say, you know, like line channel colon line channel colon equals reader. I have the when we call the reader, it returns this channel on which it's going to be producing line because that's all we care about from the reader. So, hey, reader, go give me a channel of strings, all right? And I want to be able to read from that channel. Okay, I just want to be able to read from that channel. And so, here, of course, we know how this has to operate. We have to have an output channel, right? And we're going to make that channel. And we're going to return it. We're going to return that output channel. But we don't want to sit around and wait. So of course we have to launch a go routine and we're going to use anonymous go function, go func, and we're going to say launch a go routine. And that's a function here. And so this is our anonymous function and uh, here. anonymous function that we call in. And we say, go run that. And we don't need any parameters because we're not taking any parameters here. So we don't provide any parameters there, right? So this is part of our anonymous function. It's just being invoked immediately. And so we go say, loop around on this channel. And then once you get a line, just send it out on the channel. Make sense? So that's what our line reader does. All right. Now, now we have line reader and we can get, so let's go back to this. So we're here now. So we have a reader that's looping around, getting data and pushing it in onto a channel. So we have a line channel now. Now we need this line splitter to take data for off of this and push it out into our word channel. So let's do just that. And so we should do that. So let's say call this word channel. And I'm going to give you a hint by putting word channel zero here. And I'm going to say, um, you know, hey, call the line splitter and give it this line to reach from, this channel to reach from. Okay. And so our line splitter doesn't really return uh, the, the words that it's split from a line. Instead, what it does is it return a channel. Again, a channel on which you can read what? You can read arrays of strings, right? So when uh, we split a line, we're gonna give return a channel on which you can read a slice of string. So channel, I'm gonna read off of it a slice of strings, right? Remember, you could send any, you could send channel on channel, which we're gonna see in the very next section, not this video. We see what channel, sending channel on channel, but here, I'm going to send a slice of string on this channel. Channels are first class data types in Go. It makes it very easy for you to send all kinds of things on channel. Channels on channels, arrays on channels. So we're going to send a slice. Every time we read from that channel, we're getting a slice of string every time we read. Okay. And so what do we accept? We're really accepting a, our line channel, right? We accept our line channel, which is just a channel that we can read strings from. And so here again, our output is just making a channel of slices um, that, that um, can accept, um, on which you could send and receive slices. And this guy is going to return out. Well, what do we need to do to split stuff? Well, we have this word here. Um, well, we're really taking the result and sticking it on output, right? But 
we're looping over for L underscore that. Well, no, I don't need that because I'm looping over a channel. Um, I'm looping for a channel now as opposed to an array. So I'm going to do for L get range over this line channel. All right? Does it make sense? When I'm reading over a slice or an array, I have the index. But once I'm ranging over a channel, I just get the value. So on this line channel, it's just strings that I'm getting. So I just loop over that and I can get in strings. Of course, I'm going to end once this channel is closed. And so um, I get that and I loop over it. I split it and stick that array, that slice of a string onto the output channel. But of course, this needs to be in a go routine. So let's do that. So we can say go font and it takes no argument and stuff. And there is our go routine. We wrap that in a go routine. Now, for my reader, after my reader finish reading, so this is a go routine that's launched and it sits in this for loop and it's finished reading from the data source. When it's finished the data source, I should close my output, right? Close output channel. That sends a nice signal to my dunk stream, anybody who's reading from that channel, when there's no more data to be coming, coming over there. So this guy who's sitting there reading off of this thing, he knows not to expect anymore. So he's sitting there and reading off of this line channel. When it's closed, he knows that though there's no more data. So he can close his output. And again, that sends a message to anyone who's reading off of this channel that has um, slices of words that, hey, no more slices of words are coming to you, buddy. You do what you need to do, but I'm not sending you anything else. And so that's nice. All right, so now we have this. Now, what should we do next? Well, it seems like what we should do next is call our um, word counter, right? And we say, say, say hey, go word counter you can go well let's just do it this way let's call word counter and give it the word um, channel okay so what do we want to make that an actual go routine to run off and go do i can i'll let you decide because if you do make a go routine remember once you launch that you're going to come here and it's in wrong trying to print out results immediately and this guy may not be finished so you'll need to use a wait group to make sure that how you once you launch this, you wait on it, and then, you know, um, right? So we can we can do that next, but let's just do it this way. So when I launch, call this guy, not launch, when I call this guy, and I call him with a, um, what am I passing him? Is this channel where you can read um, words off of, the word cha words channel. So what did I call it up here? Words channel? So, he has the words channel, and he's reading, it's a channel that he can read, channel you can read arrays of um, slices of string off of, all right? And for this, I'm going to sit in a loop, and every time I, I, what I get is this, words, so I'm four words range over this words channel because this is a channel, when I range over it, I'm getting the data type here, which is a slice of words. So since I get a slice of words, now I need to loop over every word, right? Because I'm getting a slice of words. So for underscore, that's a slice, I don't want the index, W, which is the word, equals to range over words. And then I do what exactly what I was doing before. Make sense? Because I'm no longer calling my word counter with a slice of words as you were doing before. Now I'm calling it with a channel and now it's going to do it. So once this finish and it returns, of course, it's going to return once it can't read any more from that words channel. It can't read any more from this words channel when this line splitter closes out that words channel, says, hey, I don't have any more word slices to put on there, any more words to put on there. This guy is going to finish and return 
and once he return my main function can proceed because my main function is go so this is going to be run in the context of main if you remember we talked about context okay so the word context is going to run in the context of main whereas these two are going to be run in the context of their own go routine whatever go routine is spun up for them so this program is really just three go routines so let's see if this actually works so i run this and it works the exact same way give the exact same result except no i'm gonna argue that this is a much 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 better program this is a much better program because we can do things like fan in and fan out we've set ourselves up here where this guy doesn't have to read from some slice but we can easily change this out with some function that reads from a file a database a web server and it returns a word channel and the rest of the program doesn't need to know or care that though you start reading data from somewhere else as a matter of fact we can have multiple sources that we read data from and then now we'll have multiple channels on which data lines are coming in but then we use a fan in function to read from those and now pipe it to one channel on which this line splitter reads from okay and then at that point just like your exercise is going to be i want you to duplicate this line splitter and of course the line splitter is reading from the same channel but now you have two channels that you have words from and the work you have to do is now make your word counter reach from those two channels okay so that's your exercise all right so the solution is going to be there's going to be a solution directory and a stub directory uh, so i'll create those directory right now called stub which are exercise stub means just part of the code, code the thing is stubbed out and solution okay and so um the solution is going to be in there and the stub is going to be what you have to work on is going to be in stub all right and so no i did say it though i promise that i can change this into a go routine so if i say go do the word count of course um when we did this launch immediately i'm launching you know three go routine there bam 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 immediately and i tried to loop all over and print there wouldn't be anything to print right um there's nothing right it didn't get time to go do anything so what i really need is for this guy here to wait and so for that i should let me take out this line i don't need that line anymore so i'm gonna do um I can make it a global variable so notice how um, i've made result a global variable so i don't have to pass it into um, this word count um, word count here i could do that but i'm gonna actually make the variable right here and i'm gonna say and actually i'm gonna do, be, in, do better programming by putting that variable in here and then we'll pass it to word count instead so we say word count um, write your result um onto here reading words from that channel and also we want to give you a work group um and of course pointer you remember that that headache we want to give you a work group so we can do var work group is sync that weight group sorry now work group weight group and then before i launch the go i want to say weight group that add come on add uh one because this is i'm going to launch one or this is the only place where i need to wait on this guy to complete right um because all these other ones it's fine i need to wait on the word counter to finish reading words before i can proceed to doing the for loop and printing stuff out so wait wait okay so here's i wait now of course if i add a one here and then i'm waiting here i'll wait forever if this word count doesn't tell me that it's done so once it's finished looping over and everything word count um because this is a go routine now by the way weight group so let's do this this guy gets a its result is going to be result is going to be a map of string to int and of course we also given it not only the channel but a weight group so we give it a weight group pointer to sync that weight group and so when it's finished i want to say weight group that done okay so this is launched as a go routine so it goes off and start running by itself and it gets spinning over here and then when it's finished it signals 
that it's completed about to come it's finished by doing with that done at which point I need that because once this goal chain launch it's off doing its thing and I'm gonna be here in my main all right so this should work on change now um, actually uh, there's a problem because um, what I'm doing is I'm passing a copy of my map to this word counter and it's gonna modify a copy of that map and so I'm not gonna have the result that I expect so I can pass a pointer to it um, right if I want I can say you know pass a pointer to my map and I can say this guy takes a pointer to map All right and so now my result should be the same oh what am I doing uh, result W type okay does not support indexing of course and so I can dereference um, result so it's a pointer do reference it and then um, I can index it all right and so bam ah, come on so there's a pointer so I want a pointer to a map of string so so I want to dereference this result and then index into it dereference this result and then index into it all right so now can we please get this going all right <laughs> there we go so i just had to be uh explicit uh, what happens is the order of binance so basically it was trying to index since the index operator the square bracket um binds stronger to the, the variable it was trying to dereference the pointer and then not the reference index the pointer and then dereference it so i have to say hey no what i want you to do first is dereference it this pointer back to a map of string and then index into it right we cover pointers way early in chapter two um so do review it if that doesn't make sense all right so notice now how i've passed a pointer and my word counter can operate on it and we can wait on it so all you have to do now is have multiple splitters and of course your work counter need to take multiple splitters and hint hint is going to need to use a select statement to read those words so basically you you will have to you know fan in back again okay all right i'm going to cut this out here it's a really long video um but i tried to bring together a lot of things that we've learned already you know with maps and you know the go routine especially and ch um, channels okay into what I hope is a okay example um, you might not see the purpose of it but it's a well-known Tata example that is, gets done for in MapReduce and big data when you want to count the occurrence of things and so this is one way of doing it and we have a concurrent solution that can scale very easily and in later chapter when we learn how to do other things you'll see how we could revisit this if we wanted to all right all right then take care thanks for subscribing thanks for your support see you in the next video if you haven't subscribed already please do if you have already subscribed or even if you haven't do spread the word appreciate it take care bye